Thanks for stopping by. I'd like to preface this video by saying it is not a knitting tutorial, but a means for you to have something playing in the background while you work on your own knitting project. If you're like me, you'll find that you really like YouTube and a lot of the content that you like to watch is very visually engaging. So this is an opportunity to have something going on that is more visual at the beginning of the video and then just me chatting with you while I work on my own project toward uh, the later half. So for today's project, if you aren't familiar with the Tempestry project, that is what I'm going to be working on today. This is not part of the Knit Ahead for the Holiday series that I have because it's actually not a holiday gift, but an anniversary gift for my partner's relatives. Um, their one year anniversary is coming up in October and I thought that it'd probably be a good idea for me to get started on something for them to give as a gift for their anniversary. Um, and since it's almost June now, uh, I think I need to start now <laughs> rather than later just to make sure that I'm keeping on top of that. So I'm taking a segue from that series and keeping this as its own separate video, but I wanted to go ahead and show you guys what this looks like. Um, I'm going to have an insert, if my video editor allows me to, have an insert to show you what the project looks like all laid out because it'd be a little bit awkward for me to try to show you all of the contents in this bag. So if you aren't familiar with the Tempestry project, it is an Etsy store that provides you with a, um, a year's worth of weather reports for a town um, as long as the web service that they use to get the data from has that town available and you have a row essentially for each uh, day's weather patterns. So they, you don't, this is uh, not really a pattern per se, but more of a guide as they put it, um, to show you kind of how to lay out your work. So they have a knitting kit, which is what I have. You can use garter stitch or linen stitch, and they also have a crochet kit on their site. So I'll link in the description box um, their Etsy store so you can look it up yourself, but if you're tempestry, if you think of temperature and uh, tapestry mixed together, you get tempestry. So it's meant to be like a wall hanging that kind of represents a year's worth of weather uh, forecasts. And it's made to be mindful knitting, to be aware of climate change and all of that uh, environmental factors that we are currently facing, at least if you believe in that, that is what's going on, but if you're not, it's still just a cool way to see what the, the year's forecast look like for a particular town's year. And for this one, um, they have a couple options when you purchase the kit. If you want the deluxe, it comes with, it might be like the premium package that comes with the beads, the needles, and um, like a precipitation beads and a special days beads. You can order just precipitation beads, you can add on just uh, special event beads, you can add the crochet hook that you need uh, to string the beads onto your knitting, and they you could also just not have the needles included. So I bought my pack with the yarn measured out for knitting, I plan on doing a garter stitch, and I also added on the golden um, special day beads so that that particular day um, of their anniversary, I will weave in, or at least attach the beads to that row of knitting that I have for that particular day. And um, all of the yarns measured out. So let's say you think this is a cool idea, you look at their site, and you might not want to pay for the kit. Um, if you go to any weather forecast um, site, or like for historical data, you can certainly make this yourself just by... Um, going to that day, or that, well, that whole year, but then, like, knowing the actual day um, that you want to commemorate if you choose to, or if it's just a year in general, then you don't have to worry about any special beads. But if you have, like, a lot of scrap yarn lying around that is pretty much a rainbow, um, each yarn represents a different temperature range, so if you have a lot of different colored yarns and you think you'd be able to do this yourself, then you don't have to buy their kit, but... I, one, don't have all of these colors on hand, and two, do not want to buy all of these colors to make this because I only need a little bit, as I don't generally gravitate to a lot of these colors for my projects, so I wouldn't want to pick up any more yarn than I need. So they take care of all that for you, and it's in this cute little um, uh, 
meshy bag, so I can like zoom in a little bit more for you so you can see it. Um, and then it has the guide inside. You can choose when you order if you just want them to email you the PDF or if you want it printed out. And since I was going to print it out anyway, I just had them include that um, with the kit. So um, everything laid out, I will show you in another image if it hasn't already popped up here somewhere. So I'm going to actually cut this part of the video off so I can, one, look closely at the pattern um, guide and make sure that I have everything knit properly, um, and then show you my progress. So then at that point, I can chat with you and everything. But let me for now just pull out the, the little intro. I think it's either this one or the other one. Let's see. All right. Here we go. So there's a little bit of information I'll read here. Uh, the Tempestry Project. By blending fiber art with temperature data, the Tempestry Project creates a bridge between global climate and our own personal experiences through knitted and crocheted temperature tapestries or tempestries, as I mentioned earlier. Each tempestry represents the daily high temperature for a particular year and location. January at the bottom, so at the very end of the tapestry is January, and then December at the top. All tempestries use the same yarn colors and temperature ranges, creating an immediately recognizable and globally comparable mosaic of shifting temperatures over time. As more and more people begin making tempestries, both individually and in geographic collections, a mosaic of our climate history is beginning to emerge. The more people get involved through knitting, crocheting, discussing, sharing, the richer, the more beautiful, and the more undeniable this mosaic becomes. So. It's a, essentially like mindful knitting to have a lot of people involved in this project. You get to see um, just varying temperatures throughout different years, different towns, and it's a very cool idea, very nice concept. And so if you're not even sure like where to begin, this I'm using as a gift for somebody. If you know somebody who knits, you might want to give this to them as a gift, maybe their birthday, if you know the exact year, town they were born in. Um, and the day that you, if you want to buy the special beads for the special day, um, you could knit it for them or just give it to them as a gift so they can work on themselves if they don't already have it. Um, I was thinking in my mind I could do a tempestry for my, um, my kitties that I have, like one for each of them. Um, the two that I do have currently alive with me, I do know the town they were born in and the day. And that would, and of course the year, because I know how old they are, so that'd be really cute, I think, to have on my, my cat memorabilia wall, um, the tempestries representing their birthdays, or maybe even the days that they came home to me. That would be cool, too. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm just thinking of, like, what kind of crazy cat lady stuff can I do with this? Um, but if you have children, you can do, you know, their city and day that they were born, of course, the year, and then have, like, a wall. Like, people have photo albums and uh, photos everywhere. You could have um, a string of tempestry projects for, like, your relatives and important family members, important days in your important days in your life, like give it to somebody as a graduation gift, um, the day that they graduated, either high school, college, what have you, um, something nice like that, the birth of their first child or any other children that they have. So you can really take this project and add it to any, I think, um, heirloom, well not even an heirloom, but just a very memorable hand-knit gift that really represents something one. Um, climate awareness and then just a really cool visual effect of what the temperatures were like um, that particular year that something happened in that particular town. So like I said, I'm going to cut off now. I'm going to get started with this and then depending on how the sun feels like shining for the rest of the afternoon, I'll pop in again and show you how far I am and then that'll conclude the video so far as the knit with me for the day with this temp tempestry project. All right, I'll check in with you soon. Hi, everybody. Okay, so I'm back, and it is a different day. It's actually the next day, and the common wall is next to some doggies, so they are having some kind of freak out right now, so pardon the barking in this room. That's just going to kind of be how it is sometimes, and this home in general, because they bark a lot, so I'm actually surprised they haven't barked more in previous shoots. So, anyway... Um, let me show you my progress. <laughs> uh, 
it looks crazy. Um, so this is as far as I've knit at this point. Um, this is the starting side and this is the uh, wrong side, but it, the wrong side actually looks a lot better to me. So the wrong side might actually be the pretty on display side. Um, so uh, I started out uh, with circulars because the instructions or at least the guys the guide said that uh, circulars were recommended because of um, knitting on the same side if you're carrying your yarn I tried that a couple times and I didn't know what I was doing so I ripped it out started over on single set and I figured I'll just cut um, the ends when I need to start a new piece and I've been um, knotting them along the edges to make sure that they don't fly away. Since they only give you so much yarn, I think their intent um, was to have people carry it, but depending on how many jumps I have, I don't see that working well if I'm just pulling the yarn, pulling the yarn up and up and up um, as I keep switching colors. And that's a lot. And that's a lot of balls of yarn to manage, so I'll see how it goes. I've already come this far with the piece, so I might as well just keep cutting it. Um, this is actually a Knit Picks Wool of the Andes yarn that they mentioned, so worst comes to worst, if if I run out, um, I can always go to Knit Picks and purchase some more because they have a lot of colors, which is why um, the Tempestry Project um, decided to use uh, wool of the Andes yarn because there's so many different colors you get a good range for each uh, temperature change and it looks like from the uh, color chart I didn't mention but uh, a link to the Ravelry site as well because you can just get the pattern without having to purchase the kit if you just want um, pattern or you could just purchase the color card if you want to you know go online and find the weather information and then use the same colors there. So, um, sorry, my allergies are deciding that today is the day they want to start acting up. So my eyes usually water when when pollen is in the air and it's a pretty warm day. But anyway, um, so yes, so I have this color chart, which is so helpful. Um, it has Celsius and Fahrenheit either side. And um, I chose to keep my temperatures in Fahrenheit, so I just make sure I'm on the Fahrenheit side. And on the uh, guide they give you, um, I included it in the photo, but um, each day is essentially a row. Um, it gives you the date and the highest temperature and then what color yarn to use. And then progress, you can just keep track of what row you've finished. And funny enough, um, once I figured out what I was doing and decided to scrap the whole carry the yarn thing, I switched back to um, straight needles and I was knitting along and my goal was to at least do this first full sheet to have something to show you guys for today's filming since I wasn't far along um, last night to continue sh uh, shooting before it got dark and I would have to use the lights in here and it'd just be kind of muggy or dingy and weird and all that stuff. So. I was, it was really late, um, and then we had a bad storm, and the power went out, so I had to stop um, what I was doing and pretty much call it a night, because I didn't want to waste my battery on my phone hanging out since my computer wasn't working, considering there was no power, um, and the fact that I didn't know how long the power would be out, I didn't want to waste my battery, because I couldn't charge my phone, no electricity, all that good stuff, so I just went to bed. <laughs> And the whole time I was just kind of anticipating the power to come back on. So I had a rough night. So it's pretty late today because I spent most of the morning just kind of like, blah, in a slump because of the issues that I had last night. So you'll join me for a little bit while I continue to knit. And I am on... I was about to start knitting with the creme brulee colored yarn. Um for line 26 and the temperature ranges I think are hmm how what's the jump like four degrees so every four degrees you have a different color yarn you have to do and considering this is in Texas 
uh, and this is the start. Let me just get all these strings out of the way. Um, these were some of the colder days, and then they get some um, really warm and mild days and some more cold days, which is interesting because, you know, we're just into the first month of the year, and we had these crazy jumps in temperature from really, really cold to really, really hot. So, so far, I'm really kind of intrigued by that because I figured Texas would be hot, but, you know, here on the 2nd of January uh, last year, it was 27 degrees. Like, what? That's like weather I get here, or even colder than that, but that's like really cold, I think, for for Texas. And then it went back to 27 on the 17th, so it's just really weird. Um, but then everything else is like 50s, 60s, maybe a couple 40 degree days here, but... I mean, weather like this makes me consider, you know, moving to a warmer climate, but I do like seasons, and even though I don't get all of them where I live now, at least I get a variation of them, so, and, you know, here in the, later on in the summertime, we get, where it's a good high temperature, you know, 99 degrees, uh, depending, so, let me just keep going. My goal, since this is due in October, I want to have it, um, I might have to block it flat. I don't think soaking it's such a good idea because there are so many different colors. I don't, heaven forbid, like any of these dark greens and blues bleed into these finer yellows. That would really, really um, bum me out. So I might just buy some um, flat blocking spray and give it a good spritz so I can block it without worrying about anything bleeding. Since it's a flat piece anyway and it's not going to be worn, it's just like a wall hanging, um, I think that'll be fine. So let me go in with this creme brulee. Um, let me pause a moment, change the camera angle a little bit more. Um, it fell. So there was a cut a little bit earlier, um, but one second. So um, I'm at a different angle now. You can see more of my lap, and hopefully by the next time I film an episode for you guys, I'll have a tripod so I won't have to keep taping and praying that my phone doesn't just uh, decide that today is this last day of life and fall from the duct tape situation I have going on. So. Let me grab my other needle. So we're going to knit a row of creme brulee, and then we're going to knit another row of semolina, which is this lighter yellow, and then we're going to knit three rows of caution which is this one, and then another row of semolina caution conch, which is this corally looking color, conch, coral, conch shell, um, and then another row of semolina, and that'll get us to the end of this page. So I think for today, that is as far as I'll go with you guys, because you've already stuck it out with me at the beginning when I explained the pattern and listen to my woes of figuring out what to do. And I think the next time I do this, because it's really, it's a really cool project, um, I don't know what it is with me and patterns and like not figuring them out very well, but like the way it was explained, I tried purling on the, you know, sliding the work, purling on the same side I just did, and then knitting on the other side, which would have been a knit anyway, and it was just looking real crazy, so I was like, alright, never mind, and I think you guys can see. So thank you for for sticking it out with me while I figure that out. So if you have already knit a tempestry, oh, oh my god, I, <laughs> I've done this so many times already. I'm knitting with the end yarn. Oh wow, see, I something is wrong with me, <laughs> uh, which is why I am. I always like to say these are not tutorials because you don't want to listen to me give you any type of instructions right now because you will start looking a mess. So let's do that the right way. <sighs> okay. <laughs> 
Okay, so let's grab this, turn it. Hoping you guys can see everything I'm doing, even though I look crazy. But maybe that'll make you feel better. You're like, okay, I'm not as bad as her, so my life is okay. All right, now grab that working yarn here. And knit across, and then I'll just give it a little slice and then tie the loose end to the other little stragglers I have. And so they're just kind of tied all together on the ends. It's not cute, but once I'm done, I'll weave them in and knot them and stuff so that at least the rows um, are nice and uniform in that aspect. There are some parts where I attempted to carry the yarn and they look obvious, but I'm not going to point them out. If you can't already tell where they are because they are in this um, piece that I've just showed you, uh, yeah, we'll just keep it between us. But I, it was so frustrating. Like, how come it's so hard? Like, why am I purling on the right side and then I'm knitting when I flip? Because that's what it sounds like you're supposed to do. And I was watching some other people do it online, and I still was like, well, they were actually did a linen stitch. So if you're going to do it, you might want to just do the linen. But that's too many other steps for me to remember what to do on the right or wrong side. It's so I'm like, no. I'll just do garter. Garter should be pretty painless, right? Just knit, knit, knit. So if I just do that, focus on just knitting, don't worry about making it making the yarn carry, I should be okay. But yeah, let me know if you've already done this project or if you heard of it yourself. I'd be interesting uh, to see because they got, um, I think the group got some kind of award for this idea. Um, and it's just like a really cool fiber art kind of thing that is also um, raising awareness about our environmental situation. Okay, so. I have this crazy bit of work here. I have my phalange thingies. So this is the yarn I just did. I have the end piece here. So now I'm going to cut this and tie it to the next one and then start the line with the, um, what did I say, semolina. I have my little, my little scissors, give this a snip, and it's pretty short, but I do have um, some darning needles that I think will work with this. And let me tie that to that guy. And it's not super tight, it's just so that uh, that last loop, since it's kind of hanging on for dear life, doesn't just go flying off somewhere and come undone. And then like several rows in, I'm like, oh no, I don't have an end or a beginning anymore. And it's too small to really finesse it without getting out my tiny crochet hook to kind of loop it back through. So there's that. And I don't use creme brulee for a while, I think. So let me double check. So I just want it like out of the way. Yeah, maybe what, 30, 20-ish rows from now. So I think it's fine. I can just wrap it up and add it to this little pile over here. Um, so we have semolina, just one row. Oh, gotta remember to mark my progress, so I'll do that. And if you're watching for the first time, uh, let me know what, what you're working on right now. Like what is your, which one's this? 
Everglades. Ah. I was like, why did I use Everglades? There was one day where it was 38 degrees. And I had just a little teeny bit. So I, considering there's not much left, I don't think I use this much more. Let's just see. Um, any more Everglade? Considering these are hot days, it's probably going to be hot for a long time. You might see it later in the year. Maybe December. Hmm. Weird. I don't think... I don't think we see Everglade ever again. So they did give us pretty decent yarn um, to do another one if you needed to. But my vision, sometimes I scan over something four or five times and then it's like the 15th time that I see it, that I notice something different. So I will not totally discard this Everglade until I'm further along to say, oh yeah, I don't need that anymore. So, Semolina, and honestly, these colors, now that I'm looking at the chart, I mean, I don't generally go for colors like these, but they're cute. Um, don't know, like, some of these lighter colors would be great for, like, baby stuff, but, um, as far as anything, I generally, so, the thing is with me, is I love, like, blues, teals, and if you've watched any of my other videos, you would know, because uh, I mentioned that before. But, like, as far as what I wear, I don't usually <laughs> gravitate to brights just because of having cats, and some people, you know, don't mind it so much, but the more I can avoid having to, like, spend time removing cat fur from obviously cat fur things is ideal for me and I used to wear a lot of black so now I gravitate toward like grays and earth tones and some like semi muted shade colors just because I don't have to spend as much time worrying about making sure that if my cat wanted to rub on my leg or something before I went to work that um, everybody in the world would know that I have cat fur all over me, and some people don't mind it so much, but because my job is relatively professional, I would say they encourage a, at least a little bit of kept-ness. Um, I don't want to have them coming with me to work in, in that nature, so. Uh, so, like, around the house, like, I do have, like, my hangout clothes that are cat cuddle friendly and then I have my work clothes so I try to keep them separate um, and then of course I'm selective of the colors I wear because of that I also don't wear a lot of light colors just because they they show stains easily and I can't say I'm the cleanest or not the cleanest but the safest person when it comes to you know eating food or uh, when I ride public transit I might you know, brush up against something, just being outside, and, and it's like, oh man, I ruined this thing. It got stained, and I really liked it, so I generally go for, like, darker, muted colors in my, my general wardrobe. And then every now and then I like to throw in some bright colors, um, depending on the season, like it's spring now, so I do have a few yellow things, but because of the the pattern on them and stuff like that, um, it's easy enough for me to, to keep it clean and for free. Alright, so we just finished that. So we did our row of semolina. And I can snip it and then we'll start with, um, Caution again for three rows, which oh, I can't wait till I get into like the really hot months where it's just row after row after row of same colors, and then I don't have to worry about cutting the ends as much. Oh. So 
So, like before, I'll tie this to the last one I did, which was this creme brulee. Passion, mark my progress. One, two, three of caution. So let us go. So my question to you is, have you, oh, yeah, have you knit with Wool of the Andes? I heard it's pretty affordable um, from the Knit Picks line, and Knit Picks is generally not as expensive as some other brands, because they, at least from what I've read, they cut out the middleman, so they get more direct from factory prices of their yarn, um, which I guess is cool. I, I haven't bought anything. I haven't bought any yarn from Knit Picks, so this is the first time I've, I've worked with their Wool of the Andes line, um, but if you have, let me know what you think of it. It's, again, not super soft, considering it's wool, not like super, super scratchy, but kind of rough. I think it, it would definitely suit this project, being a, that it's... um for a wall hanging. It's not meant to be worn on the body, but I guess if it was like a cardigan that would be fine because it's not rubbing against your skin um, or maybe a shawl or something like that. So it's not like super, super close to the body. There's a little bit of a layer um, of your own clothing between it. Um, it might not be too irritating to some people as like a sweater that you'd wear just directly on your skin, but I honestly don't know if I would choose this as my first choice of yarn to knit with as a direct on the skin clothing piece. Um, but let me know if you've worked with it before and if you find that if it is um, something you've used to knit an item on the body if you found that it was either itchy or the person who you knit it for had any kind of complaints about the quality of the material or fiber I guess I'd be interested to know and I think they do have tons of patterns that use this yarn I do have a pattern book from them but I haven't haven't used it yet um, it was like um calm knitting well actually I was it directly knit picks or was it just something I bought on their site it might have been something I bought on their site but I will have a separate video at some point where I do uh, talk about my different pattern books and things like that if you're interested in learning otherwise you don't have to watch that video when I, I do post it and so this will be the last video I have for maybe a week or so. I was so fortunate to be on vacation for a couple weeks, which allowed me time to uh, get some content together to have on my channel. But um, going forward, I'd probably only be able to shoot maybe once or twice a week, depending on the lighting situation and what other busy things I have on the weekend. But the best light I get is about early noon slash midday. While the sun is still out and I have a good natural lighting in this room and then later when I have some lighting that I've purchased uh, I'll be able to shoot maybe in the evenings when I come home from work as well I definitely want to have more videos of me knitting and maybe like a sped up process like start to finish with some voiceover work since that will take longer than just a 30 minute or so video and I also think that it'd be nice to have some opportunities to knit like at the park since it's going to be nice 
Um, weather coming up here, it's already a pretty okay day, but like a good 70 degree day where I can just go to the park, set up a camera, and knit, and talk with you guys. Um, maybe even knit downstairs, or, you know, show you guys my cats, and just different ideas that I have down the pipe. But for now, um, this will be the last video I have for maybe a week or so until I get the tripod. I have it in my cart, so as soon as I have um, my next paycheck, I will be able to squirrel some money away to get a tripod so at least um, we can start filming of better angles of me knitting uh, while we chat. So thanks for stopping by and I'll see you in the next one.